Do you want your videos to sound bad? Or do you want your videos to sound good? Hi everybody, we're back with another tutorial in Cubase. Today I am going to share with you some tips and tricks on working with video in Cubase. You can do a lot with sound in Cubase, but video, Cubase is not a video editor, so there are some quirks and I'm hoping to expose those and show you that there are some things you can do to make working with video in Cubase easier. So let's go back to the beginning of the video where I did my little thing about you can either sound bad or you can sound good. And let me show you how I would use Cubase to do that little thing. So I actually recorded the voiceover into Cubase and we can listen to it. Do you want your videos to sound bad or do you want your videos to sound good? And then I did a little treating of the vocals here with just an EQ and a limiter. And so we'll listen to that. Do you want your videos to sound bad or do you want your videos to sound good? And now let's replace the video file with this audio. So we'll have to import that video. Let me set the playhead where I want it to be. Import video file. And so here's tip number one. Cubase does not lock the audio and video track. So I can move the video around and it'll get out of sync with the audio track. And that is just an unfortunate result of Cubase being an audio editor, not a video editor. So all I'd have to do is just put this back on the five marker and put this one back on the bar. But let's talk about locking the tracks. The only way that I know how to do this, and I'm, there may be a better way, is to create a folder like the video with audio folder and I'll make that pink because that's my video color and I'll move my video into it and I'll move the audio for the video into it. And now when I want to move, I move the folder itself and they'll all move as one, which is nice. And now let's get into syncing the audio that I recorded into Cubase with the audio that exists in the video file. So we'll make this big and we'll make this big. And unfortunately I didn't do a clap clap, so I can't just match the waveforms, but what I did do was I applied a pre-roll to the recording. So it's like a snap, 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 snap with the metronome. So I can use that as my guide. So what I'll do is just cut it off here and normalize this just to make it bigger. Audio process, normalize, that should work. And then I'll just glue this back together. So I know that this was the bars before this hit. So if I want to line this up, remember you have to move the video folder so that the uh, video moves with the audio. And we'll unsnap it. We'll move this back and we know that the audio starts here at 345. So this last hit should be at 344.3 because I was actually in 34. So we'll move this and then we'll sort of position this so that the hit is right at 344. And that seems reasonable. Maybe just go back a little bit. And you'll notice that the video and the audio will be synced. Do you want your videos to sound bad or do you want your videos to sound good? Interesting, huh? And then to see the video, you hit this button here on the video track. Do you want your videos to sound bad or do you want your videos to sound good? So we have, without the voiceover. Do you want your videos to sound bad? Or do you want your videos to sound good? And with the voiceover. Do you want your videos to sound bad? Or do you want your videos to sound good? And to achieve an effect like we saw at the beginning of this video, what we'll do, and F8 is the hotkey for your video player. So you can either hit this button to bring up the video player on the video track itself, or hit F8, which is nice because you don't always want to have focus of the inspector on video. So if we wanted to create an effect, 
like we had at the beginning of the video. We'll just go here. We'll unmute everything. Do you want your videos to sound bad? We want that to sound bad. So we'll just cut out that part. And then we know that the rest, we want to sound good. So we'll cut out that part. And we get... Do you want your videos to sound bad? Or do you want your videos to sound good? And we're ready to export. And what I do is I just select the whole video file. I hit P. And we need to export the audio first. So that's tip number two. So we're going to export audio mix down. And we'll hit export. And once the uh, mix down has been exported, we can go to file, replace audio and video file. You select the video in question and you hit open, and then you select whatever you saved your exported audio as, and then it'll just replace it in the video file. And when you work with it, it'll all work out. So next, moving on with my tips and tricks in video in Cubase, we're gonna have to talk about codecs. And codecs, I know that nobody really likes to talk about them, and there's a difference between codecs and containers. And if you'd like to know more about that, I would suggest you go to a little site called google.com and read about it because it's not within the purview of this video. But I did take a look at the Cubase manual and it says that Cubase plays back video files in a number of formats such as AVI, QuickTime, or MPEG. And QuickTime is used as the playback engine. So what I've done for most of my stuff is when I'm working with a long video file, I'll export it in QuickTime format, or DV format, and then I'll use that as my video marker in Cubase because that seems to work a lot better than like a web optimized H.264 codec. So we can show, I can show you an example of that now in Cubase. I'm working on this project. I went and visited my brother out in Seattle and I have this video footage that I took with my cell phone. I was just writing some music to it. And as you can see, it's super choppy in this video because this is an MP4 like straight out of my phone. If I take the video and transcode it into QuickTime format, it'll play much more smoothly as I did here for the second day. Uh... So that is my hot tip for uh, which video codec to use. Transcode your stuff to QuickTime format. I use Adobe Media Encoder to do my transcoding. If you don't have the Adobe suite of products, you can accomplish it with whatever video editor you use, or uh, there's a program called Handbrake, and I think you get that at handbrake.fr, and it's free and open source, and it does great video transcoding and re-encoding. And it's just much easier to work with video files if they're in a proper format for Cubase and not super compressed, because it'll stutter out and it's difficult to sort of lock in what you want. So those are my quick tips for Cubase video. You can import video. Uh, I would say put it into a folder so you can move them together, the audio and the video. When you export video, export the audio first. And then when you replace audio and video file, you choose the video and you choose the audio you just exported. And in terms of codecs, I would say use the QuickTime DV format over a typical compressed MP4 like you would get out of your cell phone or like you would post to the web because it'll be less chuggy and choppy on the Cubase video playback engine. So I hope you found these tips helpful. I hope you all have a great day. If you like this video, feel free to leave a thumbs up or subscribe. And if there's anything you'd like to see me cover in the future, just let me know in the comments. So have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye.